Hey YouTube, this is Ian from Big Rock Moto. So what I want to do today is talk about some wind management and buffeting issues on the KTM 790 Adventure R. So if you watched my review, you know I complained about the wind buffeting. If you watch a channel called the Missenden Flyer, by the way, if you haven't checked out that channel, awesome channel, great guy, uh, go subscribe to him. Um, one of his things in his uh, long-term evaluation of the 790 was the terrible wind buffeting out on the highway speeds. I'm talking like 60 plus miles an hour. So there's a few things to consider here, just talking about a baseline to start to evaluate this problem. It's gonna be affected by a lot of things. Probably number one of which is what bike are you coming from to get on this bike. So if you're coming from something like a 1200 GS, a modern 1200 GS, which has probably the best wind management of any modern bike I've ridden or any modern adventure bike, this is gonna feel pretty crappy compared to that. It's also gonna depend on your height, um, how you sit on the bike, what seat you're using, and uh, what position you have the windshield in. So a lot of, and, and of course, also the helmet that you're using. So whether you're using a dirt helmet, a dual sport helmet with a peak, or a street helmet is gonna also make a big difference. Also, whether you ride with earplugs or not. Of course, I do recommend riding with earplugs as much as you can. Okay, so let's start out with the windshield positioning. So I believe when I did my test of this bike, my review, I believe the windshield on that bike was in the high position. Now I found there to be, for my height, now I'm five foot 10 and I wear a dual sport helmet, uh, HAC DS X1. I found that in the high position, the windshield caused a lot of shaking of my helmet and a lot of buffeting noise, which was really, really tiring. When I took delivery of this bike, I put the windshield in the low position and I didn't have the spoiler on, of course. Um, I found that improved the buffeting a lot. So with the windshield down lower, I was, my head was in a cleaner flow of air and I, that, was, that was a big help. So first thing to do is experiment with the position of the windshield up or down and see which one works better for you. So with windshields, there's kind of this idea out there that's pretty much true that either you need to have a really small windshield so that your head sits in clean airflow, or you need to have a really tall windshield so it throws the wind totally over your head. Um, there is a lot of merit to that because when the wind flow is, when the edge of the wind flow is hitting you directly in your helmet, it's not going to be totally even. It's going to have some shaking to it and you're going to get buffeting. Some bikes are worse than others. Um, any of you who've had a stock Africa Twin, a stock V-Strom, uh, the older KLRs, uh, oh, KTM 950 Adventure, all those bikes had buffeting, and I don't think this bike is really any worse than those, but it, it is still an issue. Okay, so how I'm tackling the buffeting for myself, and this is some of my first attempts to deal with it, um, I bought this uh, $35 little windshield adjustable extension from Amazon. Now, a few issues. Uh, the, the way the latches work, the little plastic hinges that you loosen to adjust it um, are very cheap, and I don't feel these are gonna hold up to off-roading for very long at all. So I feel like you know washboard roads are gonna just break this thing pretty quickly. But I've been able to, so you can see how this thing um, adjusts to all these different angles, and it's extremely useful to be able to tailor the wind flow. So what I'm finding is that, uh, well, number one, it hasn't broken yet, um, but there's something called laminar flow. So laminar flow is like when you uh, have a smooth flow of, of air or water like over a surface, right, or through a surface. I'm not a scientist, but any of you remember the old laminar lifts that you'd see on a lot of motors? It looked terrible. It was these things you'd Velcro on, but the idea was is that it would shoot a stream of air, um, compress a stream of air, kind of like air going over a, a, an airplane wing or something, I guess, and shoot that air up over your head and clean up the airflow. That's kind of the theory that I was going with on this thing, and actually it's working out for me really well. So I'm finding that by running the extension like this, sort of on top of the shield, with about an inch or so gap between it and the windshield, is providing much less buffeting and much better wind protection. I was actually shocked how, how much this helped. I'm also finding that by experimenting with the angle of it, um, either direction, I'm able to change and tailor the wind flow and the buffeting. Uh, this thing is, has proven to be worth its weight in gold. Now, the test will be whether it actually holds up off-road. I don't think it will. And in that case, I'm going to be looking for some sort of similar kind of adjustable um, little wing that is better constructed and isn't going to break. Um, if you guys have any ideas on that, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to buy something better. 
But in the meantime, uh, while this thing hasn't self-destructed, it's working awesome. So I'm just gonna put it back here to my setting. So I guess what I'm saying is, experiment with your bike, try something like this to see if that's gonna work for you. Um, try some different helmets, move the windshield up and down, and don't ride the bike off just because of the buffeting. With this thing, I'm finding that this is gonna be a perfectly acceptable long distance bike for me. Now, I don't wanna fit a huge tall windshield. That kind of defeats the purpose of this motorcycle, in my opinion, because then off-road, especially when I'm standing up or being more aggressive, I'm gonna be, you know, uh, liable to sort of smash my head or, or my chest into the windshield. I also don't really wanna be looking through a windshield you know, this is a fun sporty bike and it's gonna be used off-road. I don't want a big touring windshield on it. So I'm trying to use the stock shield and uh, so far I'm having good success. So let me know what your guys' experience is or if you have any products you recommend. The reason I'm not going with like a whole rally tower and rally fairing, one is the cost. Uh, those things cost an enormous amount for some of those rally towers. The second, I'm not racing in a rally. I'm not a Dakar rally racer. I don't need the huge log navigation book and all that stuff up high on my dash for when I'm standing up so I can see it. I don't need that stuff and I don't need to pretend that I'm a rally racer. So I don't care about that part. Um, so I just, I just don't feel that's necessary to spend thousands of dollars just to maybe improve the buffeting and maybe make the bike look more cool. I already think it looks awesome as it is personally. Also, I, saw, I see no reason to get rid of the stock head, the stock lights. They work really well. I am going to add extra lighting, but you know, they work really good. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more content on the 790 and all the other motorcycles that I ride. Um, until next time, uh, ride safe. See you out on the trail.